It's the holiday season. And doop dee doo. A dickery dock. And just exactly. At 12 o'clock. Something, something. So get in your socks. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good Lord. I know. Oh my God. Well, hello again. How's everybody doing? I hope well. <laughs> Um, welcome back to the, right now it's the Steven and Jason podcast. Uh, we had a, I mean the last episode did a little something, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you're just joining us <laughs> last episode, we, uh, were casually having a conversation about, uh, our acting careers and kind of who we've worked with over the years. Yeah. Right. Uh, and you mentioned, um, a celebrity celebrity uh, by the name of Amber Heard. Yeah. So as it turns out, there's a little bit of controversy going on involving Mrs. Heard. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah, no, I am. So I, I, I told you I made that TikTok and right. it got a little bit of views. Mm -hmm. um, not huge, you know, not huge, uh, what I'm used to, Right. you know, and people were like, you need to speak up and tell your story. And then you and I were just having a conversation because right now we're doing this thing and we're figuring out what it is. Right. Right. This was quarantine. We sat down one day, we had dinner and we're like, we should just do something. Right. So that's kind of what we're doing. Right. Um, <laughs> and then your comments, <laughs> <laughs> man, some of them look guys, I appreciate your comments, right? but they just kind of tear me apart sometimes, you know? So, so the thing is this, there's been a little bit of criticism for not saying anything and, oh, that's clickbait and, yeah. and all this, but you have to understand we, th that was just more of a, a casual mention. And you even, you even said we need to discuss this in depth. Right. And I think we finished the last episode with saying just, just that. Yeah. So <laughs> keep in mind, we started this whole podcast thing with the intention to get the word out to help protect victims. Right. That's right. Initially fraud, cyber investigations. Yep. I, I've made a, a career with working complex investigations and, and you know, analyzing the detailed uh, facts and, and formulating conclusions, right? Yes. So we, right, <laughs> uh, so we talked about this and we even said, that, you know, we need to look into this a little further and start to look at the facts and maybe formulate an opinion. But you have this very unique perspective. Yeah. Because you worked with Amber on the set of Never Back Down. Yeah. And so- That's I, where she learned her- Right hook. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> well, there so, goes the comments again. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Right. So the thing is this, uh, I guess in the interest of making sure that uh, Mr. Depp's camp has the full story or an additional witness, right, to support um, maybe their conclusion, um, maybe you could give some more detailed facts about your, your experience. Yeah. Look, here's the thing, too. Um, I said... I don't know anything. <laughs> he genuinely doesn't know anything. Just as like a, uh, just as like a constant. Yeah, that's how I live my life. Uh, right. Thoughtless and free, careless and wearless. Make sure you wear less trouble to ride. See, this is. That's <laughs> so that's why things bounce around a lot. I should be on Adderall. I'm not. Um, but I'll tell you what. Over the weekend, I did a deep dive into this case. Yes. I, my stance when we casually were talking about this last week was. I don't know anything, but I don't believe her. Well, so here's the thing, though. And I know you caught a lot of flack about that, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of interesting because you never professed to be intimately involved with or uh, aware of all the case details. Yeah. And in fact, your contribution, uh, your, your willingness to divulge your experience is not tainted by any support for Johnny Depp or yeah. Amber, right? Yeah. It's just pure experience. Yeah. So the fact that you caught all this flack for it, it doesn't make sense because his information is going to be the purest without any taint of, of one of the sides. That, so That's correct. And, that's correct. And this is a podcast, people. Right. We're just talking about things. There's enough serious stuff out in the world. Yeah. And this is domestic violence, this incident, You're what's not going saying on between. This is serious? No, I'm saying I'm actually getting to exactly that. Okay. Domestic violence is not a topic to be joked around <laughs> about by any means. Yeah. Um, but you also have to consider that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are in the public spotlight, right? Yeah. So just by nature of, of their celebrity, their personal, very personal matter becomes public topic. Yeah. Right? So you have to consider that while you may formulate an opinion based on what videos you've seen or what uh, what has been reported, 
the truth is somewhere far, far, far beneath it all. Yeah. So again, I support reaching a conclusion, but make sure it's based solely on fact and not the interpretations of others. Right. So. Yeah. That's why I'm very curious to know what your experience is because there are some there are some things that stood out to me listening to the phone calls and watching the videos from an investigative standpoint. Yeah. A lot of inconsistencies. Yeah. Um, on whose part? Uh, again, I'll come from a completely objective perspective because you know I don't watch or follow entertainment yeah. type news and things of that no, nature. me either. That's what like people don't understand. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't care. I just knew her and I was like, I don't believe it. <laughs> right. No. It, so absolutely. And just from a, just as a kind of a standard though, any kind anytime I hear about something that's like relevant in, mm-hmm. the, in the entertainment world, you're usually telling me. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I can, I can at least provide a perspective of, of how an investigation would look at this. And again, it, any conclusion that I reach, that we reach, um, is going to be based on just the facts and, and the analysis of, of the same. So um, I would be curious to know if your experience has mirrored any, any of the experiences of those that have testified or... Yeah, so like I said, I, I did a whole deep dive in this and there was one thing that came, like stood out to me. Um, and I was doing this all weekend. I got into this wormhole of Amber and Depp, and it's just stuff I don't care. And there's one thing I'd like to clear up right away, um, because I said I didn't know anything, and I mentioned something about Johnny's lunch that I'm getting tore up about. Right, right. I'm fully believe now that that's a stage photo, 100%. That's my opinion after doing the research that I've, I've done. Um, but I think the one thing that stood out, and I wrote it down, Um, was a quote from Johnny Depp. He's talking to Amber. And I think it was what I was trying to describe in the last episode. Um, He said, I I loved you for many years, but you know what? You don't exist. You don't exist. You're an effing made up thing in my head. Right. And to me, I mean, that's what I was trying to get across is that, and it was heartbreaking too, because it was the realization of, um, and maybe, you know, people been in that relationship like that, where you build somebody up and you have this come to Jesus moment of like, Oh my God, they never existed. And I think that's the point I was trying to get across was, and there was a lot of terrible comments about she's disgusting. (laughs) How could you think she's good looking? Right. I'm like, listen, that's neither here nor there. Right. It's again, you can't criticize somebody for their, their experience. And listen, if you found her to be, uh, oh my was God. it oozing with, with sex appeal? Oh, shoot. And a, a succubus. <laughs> yeah, well, I changed my mind on the succubus thing. Yeah. Um, and listen, anyone who says she's disgusting, whatever, you haven't been alone with her, having a few drinks and just chatting because she is something special. And I think that um, is evident in the fact, like, look, Johnny wasn't the only, it's Johnny, Elon Musk, James Franco, right. Stephen Crowley. You yeah. know what I mean? No. So like I'm in good company. <laughs> she casts a, 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 a wide web. <laughs> a wide web. <laughs> right. um, but I think I told you, I was like, I've uh, the Enchantress, which I think is played by her ex-girlfriend, Cara Delevingne. Oh, really? Yeah. Or like Poison Ivy, that, that character. Okay. She has a way about her. And I, I mentioned the... the um, why we didn't we didn't get along when we first met right. uh, was rehearsal, but also something that I didn't discuss was the first week of filming. It was my first day. Um, I think it was like the second or third day of filming. Um, get to set. We're shooting some scene inside a cafeteria. I believe most of it got cut. Okay, if not all of it. I'm. I don't. I, you know, I've never seen the movie fully through. Like sat down and watched it. I'm not just saying it because you're in it, but it's it's worth a watch. Like it's it's a it's a good movie for what it was trying to achieve. Yeah, I but yeah. I I because of all my YouTube and all that, I um they suggested a where are they now never back down like montage, and I was in one of them. <laughs> That's they had cool. a photo of me recently. Um, but so Amber's throwing a stink, right? She's right. not coming out of her trailer. I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, this like she's so like who does she think she is? What has she done? Right. What have you done for me lately, baby? Nothing, right? Okay. So that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. The reason why she wouldn't come out of her trailer is because she was fighting with her boyfriend at the time. They were breaking up and like she's screaming. She's hitting hysterics. She finally comes out and was like, what's going on? She's like, my boyfriend's breaking up with me and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, 
cry me a river. Right. What are you making? How much money are they paying you to right. sit be, here? Be professional. How about? Like some lines, right. bro. Right. Like, I don't, if you've ever shot anything in your life, like maybe you should film three pages a day, which might be, I don't know, eight, ten lines on your part if you're lucky. It's like, it's not hard work, sweetheart. <laughs> right. Um, so that was like my kind of first experience. And I'm like, wow. Well, it doesn't sound like a very positive one then. No, but I also thought it was weird. Uh, and I think it helps at the tone of like, her relationships. Like it was okay. just weird to be in like that sort of hysterics and uh, making sure everybody knew about it. And, you know, to the point where it felt like kind of sketchy, like is production going to get delayed? Um, I mean, we were delayed by a little bit, um, but it was, it was definitely odd. Uh, and uh, she, uh, she, uh, I later found out that that was Tasha because later that weekend we hung out and she was like, Steven, you're gay. You're gay. And I'm like, no, 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 Amber, I'm not. And then she told me that she, that was, uh, her girlfriend, Tasha, who throughout this whole thing has been around. Um, and I, it is my opinion that she was always around up until recently, um, because Johnny Depp even makes a reference to her and her and Tasha have this weird, um, parasitic I told you kind of like symbiotic relationship with with each other right like when Tasha would come to set Amber's like hey make sure you don't tell her about this x y and z like it was very weird because if she found out you know her and Tasha would get into blow up arguments to the point where you know you go to her apartment the next day it's just a mess a mess um so when you're saying a mess you mean like items that were, had been destroyed and yeah you could tell something I because I, I wasn't there but right. you could tell that something went down and okay. just how she was so like the aftermath of the aftermath right. of a fight. Yeah. Um, okay. you, you'd hear her on the phone with Tasha and it was just always, it was chaotic. It was chaotic. But so she was initially making the claim that her frustration or whatever she was going through was because of her boyfriend. So she wasn't even, she wasn't even upfront initially that she was in a, uh, a relationship with Tasha. No, she wasn't out yet. She didn't come out of okay. the closet until, uh, I think like 2010, and if I get that wrong, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, but so she was always in the closet, and it's always been my stance that she is a lesbian. Um, okay. But she will tell you that she enjoys partaking in, acti in activities with members of the opposite sex, which she does. Um, so it's she's she's complicated. I think that's what I was trying to get across is that it's very complicated. Well, also, but for the article I read, she was in a relationship with Tasha from at least 2008 until she broke up and started uh, dating Johnny Depp in 2012. Yeah. So that's not an insignificant amount of time to be with somebody. That's four years. Yeah, and she was she was with her before that because we filmed Never Back Down in 2007. Okay. Maybe. The yeah. summer of 2007. Again, you'll let me know in the comments. Um, but I think it came out in March of 2008. So that means we would have filmed it in the summer of 2007. Okay. She was definitely with her. They went and got married in Canada. Um, okay. But it was very, like, it was Jekyll and Hyde. Like, Amber had one life, uh, you know, on set, which a lot of people do. Right. <laughs> and then a different personal life. And the personal life, to me, always conflicted with her set life and which I believe was, you know, kind of who she, who she was. Now I never got close with Tasha or any of that or, or the details of, you know, about Tasha. I just knew she was an artist. Um, and it was always, she kind of tried to keep, keep it separate, but it would always eventually commingle. And that's when, you know, the fights would happen. Um, it was bizarre. She's just bizarre. Um, and, well, and let me ask you this, just, just let me jump in for a second. So I, I guess one of the main allegations she's making against Depp as far as, um, to, to justify this position that she's a, a victim of domestic abuse, right? Yeah. Is that he was violent and, and the relationship was relatively tumultuous for the entire, throughout the, its yeah. entirety. Did you see anything that would be, it, it almost sounds like she was projecting a little bit, right? It sounds like she's demonstrating these same types of character flaws that she was projecting on Depp, saying that he's violent and uh, destroys yeah. things and things of that nature. Yeah. So her, from what you observed, did did she seem like that was consistent with her behavior? Or? Like violence? Not, so maybe, she's a hothead. So she's a hothead, right. For sure, I could say that. Okay. Um, 
she, she definitely lets you know what she's feeling and her emotions. Okay. There was one time, I totally forgot about this. I was, we were together and we're going to the post office and my sister called and um, I'm talking to my sister and Amber's like, Steven, who is that? Get off the phone, get off the phone. And my sister goes, <laughs> I don't want to curse on this. Don't curse. Uh, yeah. But my sister uh, never uh, felt too kindly about Amber. She's like, who does she think she is? Um, and I'm, mm. but again, though, me and Amber got along very well. I was, I, f- out of all the cast, it was just me and her who would hang out. Okay. I mean, her, she didn't hang out with like Sean or Cam or Evan. Like they were, they would be around, but right. it wasn't constant for whatever reason she uh, took, you know, me and her got along, which is weird. It's probably like a, a really bad indictment on myself. This is probably like just mutual <laughs> sociopathic yeah, tendencies. Probably. It's whatever. Probably. Um, yeah. But I think with her too, as well, is that, you know, she, first of all, she's a very, very, I want to paint the picture of her because I don't, I think from what I've uh, read and all this stuff, I, I think she's lying. So like, I don't, she's not stupid. She's probably right. one of the most well-read people I know. Um, she was always reading on set. She also, uh, she speaks multiple languages. Like she's super bright. She's super bright, which makes it interesting. Like when you watch deposition videos, maybe we'll get into later, is that she can't remember stuff anymore. Right. Which I was like, what is what is that about? What well, do you... You know, and, and her detractors, I thought it was a peculiar position for them to take because they're basically painting her like she's just some some Hollywood floozy that just mingled her way up into this, right, into Jan, Johnny Depp's life and, and reached the position that she did. That's inconsistent, right? You have to be a, some you have to be some degree of intelligent to be able to pull that off. Yeah, I mean Johnny Depp, I'm sure is no fool. He's he's his his past relationships. They seem to be long-term relationships, right? Yeah. So, um, and the guy has his flaws, obviously. Who doesn't have their flaws? Yeah. But the thirty thousand dollars a month on wines, a lot of money. He's a connoisseur. <laughs> That's right. That's all he's that a means. Collector. Uh, collector. <laughs> so uh, the thing, the thing is, though, you have to give her some credit. So, I mean, obviously, we we can take issues with what she's done. Yeah. To uh, one of the best actors of all time. <laughs> yeah. But again, you always have to keep in mind, like take an objective perspective. If he did do the things she alleged, you, you certainly don't want to detract from her as a victim either. Yeah. So you got to kind of like play this, this, this balance game. But what did, what did you experience that? I guess, I mean, the people viewing, <laughs> right. They want to know some of the, the dirt, but no embellishments, right? <laughs> Only your experience. What did you experience that may be of interest? Um, as far as a character reference goes. Oh God. Um, so look, I think what's interesting is someone messaged me, uh, from London, not Mm. from London, from England. Um, (laughs) she's a lawyer. She'll probably be watching this. Um, and she made a reference to uh, a press junket video of never back down of her doing an interview of Amber doing a video. Yeah. Uh, she's doing this. Amber's doing a sit down interview talking about never back down. Um, and she, she hears something kind of like I just heard that coffee. I, I heard it too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and she snaps at the person, right? But I was like, what you need to pay attention to in that video is kind of her uh, her WCJ that's going on over there. You know what I mean? What is a WCJ? <laughs> that wandering coke shop, bro. <laughs> um, uh, so it, and if you watch the Never da- Back Down premiere, I'll need to see you demonstrate what a W. It, it's just kind of like when people are, you know. Grind in there. Well, it's not so much a grind as it is, and you'll notice it too with people who are on Adderall. A lot of Adderall. Okay. People aren't a lot of Adderall. There's just something about the lower jaw that just starts moving around. Loose. It's got a mind of its own. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I was just curious. I was unfamiliar with that acronym, but all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I think that's important because like in, you know, the video, or not the video, I'm sorry, when she accused Johnny Depp of going on a three-day MDMA bender um, and then he goes to the hospital, this was in Australia, okay. when she threw the bottle at his finger, uh, and there's nothing in the uh, medical report that would suggest, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? dehydration or the electrolytes being all, all out of whack, um, which one time I actually went to the hospital uh, when I was filming a movie. And they came back, like, they were asking me how many drugs I was on. I wasn't on any, but my electrolytes were all out of whack because I was drinking a lot of water 
because I had an allergic reaction to, uh, people are going to comment right now, what are you talking about? <laughs> an allergic reaction to amoxicillin. Uh, so I thought if I drank a lot of water, it would get out of my system. Um, but there's none of that. Like, none right. of that. It, did, it just didn't exist. Um, and, uh, you know, there's just... Here's, here's a question that I have, like a genuine question, because I remember we talked about it. Uh, she did Friday Night Lights, right? Okay. 17 years old, okay? She has a topless scene. Okay. How does that work? Peter Berg, how does that work? I think she probably took her top off. And... But isn't that illegal? <laughs> or are you going to let uh, me know in the comments? Yeah, I guess we can... <laughs> defer to the comments? We, yeah, defer to our... Or uh, armchair lawyers. Yeah, because I, I always thought that was weird. But so for yeah. for my personal experience with it is that you have somebody who's able to control a room. She is very, very bright. Right. She knows what she's doing. And the other interesting thing, uh, and I saw her say this thing like she didn't know who Johnny Depp was really she never seen his movies and people like she's a liar she's a liar she's a liar i will vouch for her on that and say she's not lying about that you cannot talk to this woman about tv or film she has no idea no clue she doesn't watch it she you any famous movie like just bring it up and she'd be like no i've never seen it Hmm. she genuinely hasn't so i just thought that was bizarre it's like you love this craft so much but your homework seems so limited on it. <laughs> right. Well, maybe maybe that's gives some credit to the fact that her her objective is simply to secure some kind of lifestyle. And that's what I think yeah. it was. I think she really enjoyed, you know, the lifestyle. <laughs> Did you have allergies? Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, uh, that that it provided, and I think that's probably evident in, uh, you know. The, the, like, I don't know about the Billy Bob thing. It wouldn't surprise me because uh, she was always like before she was out, she was like, I'm so into older men. Billy Bob was in Friday Night Lights, of course. And, you know, that's what Johnny Depp wrote in blood on the on the in the uh, mirror in the it there. I think this was. In, yeah. Right. In Australia. But turns out, guess what? It wasn't written in blood. Right. It was written in like mascara or lipstick or something. Um, so I think after doing you know, my own homework on this. Um, and it's, it's, dude, I, I have a stories here, but I, I don't know the, you know, like we talked, I, I don't know the purpose that they serve. Um, so, you the know, thing, so the thing is this, right? <laughs> because like, I don't like, do I think any, I didn't think we'd get 10,000 people who watch this, but like, I, I don't know the purpose that they serve. Right. Well, here, here's the thing. So I, I can only speak for my opinion, uh, or, or, what I would like to know, this is, this is very interesting, right? Cause now that, now that you've kind of got me into uh, tracking this case and, and following along, um, there's a lot of inconsistencies with what she's alleged. Yeah. Uh, again, I, 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 and you do this and I do this. <laughs> so, um, it, it's very interesting. There was, there was some, there was some background chatter, um, during one of the phone calls that Johnny Depp had recorded between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, she she also brought up the possibility or she's like well it's either I'm in a fight club as far as like the, the oh, yeah, documentation yeah, yeah. of abuse or I've been I've been documenting the these abuse incidents over the years to make a case and she was almost offering that as if as if to distance herself from that as a possibility yeah which I interpreted as almost like a hiding in plain sight like obviously I'm not doing this because I'm willing to talk about it but that's also something that I, I don't think somebody who, unless they have the desire, the objective to document and build a case, yeah, I don't think that's something you typically would do. And so that's that's see, this is why we have the expert here. So that's how you took that. Like yeah. you, you you hear those words, right? And that's your opinion on that. That's it's it's my opinion. I mean, just now why typically... is there how, substantiate it? Well, so here. <laughs> You didn't think I knew that word. I feel like you're going to start saying I object at any yeah, moment. Yeah, I might. Uh, so, so, so the thing is this, right? So you, you start to make these statements where, oh, I would obviously, I wouldn't obviously never do this unless I was trying to achieve this objective. She, in my opinion, that demonstrates that she did have the intent uh, of essentially, uh, we are trying to tread carefully here, okay? Because we don't want to misspeak and we don't want to incur any liability on our parts, but Again, we're big advocates for the truth and making sure a victim gets their just attention. So, yes. Um, 
her saying that, in my opinion, my experience would be consistent with somebody who was trying to achieve an objective, mm -hmm. right? But by calling to attention to it, she thinks she's clever enough, and maybe this is a credit to, you said she's intelligent, she's trying to detract from that as a possibility. Yeah. Almost like when she makes mention, she makes these statements of, oh, well, I hit you, or something along those lines. She's basically putting it out there, well, I didn't hit you that much. It's like a, it's like a slight admission. Mm-hmm. So whether that was uh, unconscious as far as she had no intention to divulge that and then she stated that and then walked it back, I don't know. But I did hear two people that seemed to be in a very bad place mentally, right, emotionally. Yeah. And she's basically saying that I have all this this documentation, Johnny. Don't take me to court because I don't want to put you on, on, on blast. Solid evidence case they've ever Solid seen. Solid evidence, like... Dude, again, I felt like I was talking to my ex-wife. <laughs> yeah, and again, that's something you also have some experience, experience with. Um, that was the craziest line. I, I wanted to know your opinion on that one. She was like, this is the most solid evidence case that they've ever seen. So again, let me ask you this. You're in, a, you're in an abusive relationship to such an extent, yeah. right, that you feel compelled to document each incident of abuse. Yeah. Why? Why are you documenting this evidence rather than removing yourself from the situation? Well, then you have to ask yourself, what is there to gain by documenting it? So that's, that becomes the question, right? That's how I, look, I'm you're, not trained in this, but I. You're stay, you're deliberately putting yourself in a situation where you know is, is not in, in your favor, mm -hmm. right? You're it's saying, possibly detrimental to your health. You're saying if the abuse is real. Correct. Okay. Yes. Right. So she's making this allegation that uh, she's stuck around for what purpose? Mm-hmm. You're being abused to such an extent that you're documenting this. Like you're, you're actually going out of your way to document, well, I was abused on this date. Here's photographic evidence. I was abused on this date. Here's photographic evidence. Yeah. At what point did she feel satisfied to say, okay, I've uh, accumulated enough evidence. Mm -hmm. Let me bring this forward now. Yeah. Or now let me leave. Yeah. What was the catalyst for that? I wonder. I, well, I think it was when he asked for a divorce after her birthday where she threw us, he was late, right? He's supposedly he comes from a business. Uh, he, he's leaving a meeting with his business manager, finds out like his money's like gone. Right. It's disappearing. And she gets pissed, throws his phone off the balcony and his wallet, which by the way, could have hurt somebody. <laughs> Help, <That's true. laughs> bring her up on charges on that alone. <laughs> Some kind of like reckless endangerment. Um, but I think like that's probably was it. And him saying like, look, I'm done. I want a divorce. And then also here's the thing. Like, James Franco's coming to the apartment. Elon Musk is right. going. And if you're an employee at the building, and I know legally they can't, you know, say like, hey, man, I think your wife's cheating on you. <laughs> Here's the video footage. But I would think if Johnny Depp is owns the top entire floor of the building right. and he asks the, the, the um, I'm sorry, the bellman or, or whoever, hey, man, is something going on over there? Right. I don't know. Me? <laughs> you know, I feel like, yo, bro, you need to come to the back. Let me show you some footage. Well, so, like, you don't think he knew? There's no way because you do know. You know. Right. If you're in a relationship like that, uh, which I'm sure there were problems, and, you know, you're out of the country filming and you're hearing you know, little chirps of stuff, he knew. Right. It just didn't, that just didn't fall out of the sky because it's seeming like, like when you hear him talk to, to her in these recorded conversations, you could tell from me, like just inferring my own whatever. I was like, oh, he seems like he really cared. And me experiencing, you know, being around her, I've seen other people get that way around her. She, I'm telling you, you just got to take my word for it. The woman has a way about her right. that makes you just googly. Um, and she's disgusting, Amber Turner. Well, so, that, <laughs> so that's the thing, right? Though some of the some of the most prolific criminals are are the most charismatic that's why they're able to yeah like me perpetrate their well i don't know of any crimes you've committed yet but again i don't want to have that discussion yeah right now um besides there's an active investigation into yeah, you yeah. Okay, <laughs> fine <laughs> you'll be caught at some point um no so the, the thing is this all right so you're you always have to i'm not prepared to say um just based on my assessment of, of the facts that i've seen yeah you know whether or not it's confirmed that she's lying um, but I will say this, that a domestic violence type investigation is one of the most sensitive mm -hmm. because again, highly, highly contentious, right? Both sides are basically painting the other side as a demon. Yeah. Um, for the most part, whether it be law enforcement or a civil investigator, you know, you don't have the benefit of having witnessed 
so, uh, typically speaking, having witnessed the the allegation. Yeah. So when you have a matter, um, and again, I know we wanted to just talk some more about your experience with her, and then we can kind of dissect the case um, bit by bit uh, in other shows. Um, but something like the May incident where the police arrived after she called and said, um, and I'll quote her here from, from the articles I read, um, that he threw the phone at her and hit her as hard as he could, uh, hit her in the face, grabbed her hair, broke a lot of glass and things of that nature, right? Um, when the police arrive on scene, they don't find anything to corroborate that yeah. account. So um, once you've lost some of your some of your uh, credibility, credibility, yeah, I'm, <laughs> the problem is trying to then build it back up. Now, again, there are, there's always an explanation. Yeah, but the point is when when you're relying on other people to uh, reach a conclusion based on the facts available, again, whether that be law enforcement or in the civil arena, you need to have some cold hard evidence to make these allegations. Which I think is why the son libel case was so interesting because they it seems again from what I saw that they relied heavily on almost like third party accounts of the situation. There didn't seem to be any direct evidence necessarily to say, to substantiate uh, Amber Heard's claims. Yeah. And but in the Sun thing, though, that is so, I mean, that's like, that whole fiasco is like an onion grown next to like the Chernobyl plant. It's <laughs> it's large, it's layered, and it stinks. That's good. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, good for you. No, it's not. It's like something else. I know. Um, it's like a strawberry because it's got seeds. <laughs> Right, uh, but the like the, 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 it just gets weird with the son. The, the fact that it's owned by the Murdoch family, um, and then I'm forgetting the son of Rupert Murdoch, who's also a board member at Tesla. Yeah, Elon Musk. Like, there's so many connections here, um, and you know, and then there's uh, the the judge. The judge's son also works for. Um, is is a employee of uh, I think the Suns the newspaper like a, one of their subsidiary companies or something. Um, okay. So it's very like that to me. That I was like, dude, that's that's insane. Like he really like that was whatever it is. Like that was I don't know, not a shakedown, but that whole whole thing is just garbage. It stinks. Right. W- yeah. With all that, if it is true, how would you ever expect to have an objective interpretation of the facts? You can't, you know, you can't like, yeah. and, and, um, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, what's funny about, you know, what's funny about you as I know for a fact that there are things you want to say <laughs> that, that you're, you're deliberately <laughs> choosing not to selective, very selective right now. Well, those are just a few. <laughs> um, so just so uh, our audience knows, I'm looking at the screen and the notes that you have prepared of your past, uh, yeah, yeah experiences and he probably should i think divulge some <laughs> <laughs> well it's just i'm gonna advocate for it because i'm curious because if we're ever going to reach a, a our just uh-huh. a public um conclusion as to what occurred i think we need all the facts so i think you yeah i know you think that <laughs> just in the interest of the truth that's all i know you think that i know you think that but you know what i think oh, um <laughs> i think this whole thing uh stinks i think she has very little credibility. And now you guys can be nice to me in the comments uh, <laughs> because you know, I'm, not, I'm having a tough week and those comments are hurting. Um, but she, you, you know, video I thought, and we're running up here on like 30 some minutes, but the video when she's with, when she's all disheveled in the elevator, picking through her food, Right, and like right. weak and frail, but like the day before, she's totally fine. It is a my objective, subjective opinion, you know, that the girl likes to party. Um, and I just don't buy any of it. And the, the, the sad part is, is that, you know, if this isn't true, which I think the evidence points that it's not, you have Johnny Depp, you know, you have, forget, you have him losing his career. Um, and I think he said in his recording, his kids got to go to school and now, you know, you, you, they're saying your dad's a right. wife beater. Like there's a lot to this that I don't think was well thought out, right. which is why it's such a mess. Well, so, so that's, I think one of the biggest aspects of this is, so you have, you have these massive movements like the V2 movement and everything else. And the, the real careful, um, or the real frustrating position of all this is 
you have to be careful not to detract from true victims, right? Yeah. Because once you once you basically start taking everything at face value, and then you're quick to jump to your your opinion. Something like Johnny Depp. Uh, I mean, the guy is one of the most famous actors that's ever existed. I mean, we've been watching him since we're kids. I mean, yeah. Cry Baby, one of the best movies ever made. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> but now, now all of a sudden you've made an allegation, and because there's a movement behind it, the proper amount of assessment did not go into reaching that conclusion to say, hey, you're a wife beater. I mean, it's a, that's a horrible thing to say about somebody. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't need to. When, when that just, was it's happening... Just, it's just such a horrible thing to, to uh, assign to somebody's character. And I think... I don't know. I think as a society, we need to be a little more... Um, scrutin- uh, we need to scrutinize facts a little more before we reach our conclusions. Yeah, but the conclusions don't make headlines. Like, the, the well, Me Too true. thing. Like yeah. They didn't need... You didn't need evidence. You just need an accusation during that whole time. Aziz, I'm sorry. Right. Whew. That just, to me, that's a couple bad dates. Right. <laughs> like, that one was also weird. The Jeremy Piven, I mean, he lost his show over, you know, s- something that, again, was like, really? What's going on here? There's going to be nobody left. <laughs> I, I, and, 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 no, and and again, I guess I'm a little uh, passionate about it because it, it does nothing but detract from true victims. And I, yeah. think, I think victims of abuse and, and rape and, and what have you, those are some of the most egregious crimes that could ever occur. And the people that perpetrate those crimes need to be held accountable to the, to the most aggressive uh, possibility of the law for what it'll uh, allow. And I think by painting everyone with this brush, well, the Aziz Azari thing, again, from what I know about that, it sounds like that was just maybe some miscommunication. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden now you have this guy that's painted as if he's some terrible person. A rapist is a terrible person, yeah. right? Somebody who objectifies women from, uh, from not just like a, uh, not just a statement type. Oh, you're, you're a jerk type position. Someone who's a true predator. That person's a problem. Yeah. And so I heard someone suggest that you, they should change rapist to raper. Cause doesn't it sound worse? I, like dentist, rapist. Uh, <laughs> if it was like a raper, like that sounds pretty terrible. I don't thought. Yeah, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I do know that again. <laughs> again, we need to be very careful when we're when we're throwing around these accusations. And I think just based on what I've seen, um, I haven't seen anything that would suggest that uh, Johnny Depp is some prolific wife beater or abuser. Yeah, I mean, you even had his past relationships, which spanned the course of eight years. Um, Vanessa was like fourteen or fifteen. His baby mama. Well, I'm saying so, like Renona Ryder, and I think was was a Kate Moss, um, if I'm not mistaken. I think that might be right. Um, and Vanessa, is it Paradise? Paradise. Paradise. Um, you know, there have been statements gathered saying that the allegations against Johnny Depp are inconsistent with their experience. Yeah. And the only reason why I would give that some degree of credibility is their experience was quite lengthy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't like you just met the person and uh, you were intimately involved. And they don't have anything to gain other than to say... You know, this is our experience and it's inconsistent with that behavior. And I would think like just if you're uh, in any other relationship, a, you know, your ex, I know they weren't married, but it's the mother of his children. Some new, you know, 20 something year old comes into town. Like, you know, she has every reason to be like, you could certainly take that as an opportunity <laughs> yeah, to, to like to take some shots vent there. Your frustrations. Yeah. But he didn't, but I will say like, you know, maybe we'll end on this and we, we can talk about some other stuff is that, uh, my, character assessment of Amber while we had a good time and we got along really well was always felt um, that she was one per- she was two different people and then the other one seemed one of them seemed very kind of conniving and and smart and calculating calculating yeah. maybe a little manipulative <laughs> okay. um, and she was gonna get what she wanted. Whatever, whatever that was at the time, she was going to get it. Right. Um, and then the other part, which we didn't discuss, is, is uh, stuff of, from her you know, ch- childhood that she would tell me about. Uh, and I think that probably... <laughs> I'm being serious. No, I'm not laughing about what you're saying. I'm just laughing. You're talking about intimate knowledge of things she's divulged to you about her childhood. And, <laughs> and you're... <laughs> I, I'm just saying there's, there's, I think you, I think you have a, I think you have a very damaged person and somebody who wanted something very badly and it wasn't going her way and she was going to get it. Um, you know? And so let me ask you this off camera, (laughs) 
<laughs> Let's have a discussion about what information you're willing to divulge as far as what was told to you. Yeah. Maybe in confidence, uh, just maybe throughout, maybe you just, it, they were just uh, spontaneous utterances throughout your relationship with Amber. Yeah. See, it's hard because it's like you don't know if it was like the truth or like the drugs talking. <laughs> oh, that's a, wow. I'm just kidding. But are you? Um, I don't know. And then so also the conversation we're going to have to have is would you actually, you know, some of the comments were basically in favor of you contacting. First of all, everyone needs to stop it with that, right? With what? Everyone thinks they're like providing legal counsel and like for me to contact people. I There's nothing for like me to get. The only what might provide information of my experience with somebody 10 years. Get out of here. Do I think she's changed? No, I don't. But do I think like I know things about her that's probably shaped who she is? Yeah. Um but it's, you know. So that's the thing, though. If you have unique no, character I, information, you don't know if it is. I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Shut up. Because then I've got Hold on. Confidence. Just because, like, <laughs> right? So the thing is. <laughs> shut up. I'm just throwing this out there. The thing is this. Would you be willing to, if you were contacted by some some legal counsel representing Depp? I'm just asking a question. <laughs> just asking a simple question. Would you be willing <laughs> to speak with them yeah but i don't think what i have to say would be news <laughs> to them <laughs> but i know what you said your interaction and uh was and kind of we had a good time your take so things like that <laughs> that's why you're not helping yourself we had a good time i know what you've told me and it certainly seems in in the context of this this highly contested highly contentious uh civil battle yeah it certainly seems like it could be relevant See, I, here's like, and I'm not a doctor, but if my, <laughs> Duh. shocking, um, and you know, you should never, uh, just diagnose somebody, but it wouldn't surprise me if uh, there's some sort of multiple personality bipolar, uh, s- something going on there because there's definitely two people there or it could just be the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that, like these, these horrific cliffhangers. This is why this we're gonna. You realize we're gonna get screwed. You didn't say anything. We want to well, know more. Look, DM me, DM me on Instagram because <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be pushing. <laughs> I'm gonna be twisting your arm here to give a little more detail because I think it's important to again formulate that conclusion based on all of the evidence. And you do have some unique perspective here. Well, there's one night we almost got kid, or we did get kidnapped. But like, we'll save that for another time because. We're running out of time here. That's um, fine. And we don't want people to uh, to get mad and they're going to say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Giggly. I don't know who Mrs. is. Probably me. Yeah. And also, just so just to address that, um, right, the, the giggle comments, like, relax, okay? <laughs> you, it's aggressive. Cool. <laughs> but also, I'm pretty sure that bubbly, uh, side effect from drinking bubbly is that you are giggly. Giggly. <laughs> This podcast was brought to you by. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. Look, if you enjoyed watching this, um, like again, like I said, we said in the beginning, it was we just started this. We've known each other since we were 12 years old. Yeah. We decided to do something together during quarantine. Um, we both, this topic kind of fell into our laps. And I think what would be interesting in the next coming ones, because this is what you do, is maybe, right. we, uh, maybe we could actually watch the deposition videos because I don't think you've seen them. I haven't seen the depositions. Um, and it would be interesting probably from a viewer's point of view to get expert knowledge and, and not critique, uh, but commentary on it because I think you'll find it fascinating. We even touched that. Like I am so on team, like it just doesn't make sense. So like I am fully on board now that taking a look at the evidence that like, yo, this is all lies. Right. The photos is lies. The, the, the abuse claims I believe are lies. Do I think she, you know, push, 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 punch, punch, punch. And he pushed her back. Yeah, probably. But again, who wouldn't, you well, know what I'm, I mean? I'm going to respectfully remain in the position firmly of just, approaching this from a completely objective perspective, yeah. right? Like it is all, like it is an investigation that we're yeah. conducting here because again, when we do reach a conclusion, it'll it will be it'll be completely formulated on uh, based on facts. Yeah. So uh, again, I'm a huge Johnny Depp fan. Obviously, who isn't? Yeah. Uh, I also didn't hate Amber Heard in Aquaman. I know people said she was like the worst thing ever. That's probably going to be an inflammatory comment. Um, I'm going to use that as the the, uh, the the first five seconds of this. Good lord. Um, my point being though is let's let's analyze the the facts and then we'll reach our conclusion. I'll provide my expertise based on my background, and I'm going to keep twisting your arm to divulge some of your. Those are some pretty. 
yeah. pretty telling uh, experiences there. Yeah, and I think like maybe we will. I just don't know what they have to offer. It was just I I wish that I said a little bit more because I wanted to you know. Uh, when Johnny Depp says you weren't real, you, you were a made up thing in my head to me. I, when I listened to that, I was like, Oh man, like I felt that because it was, that's what kind of I experienced with her. It's like, she's not, it's not real. And, and then when you finally find, figure it out right. and find that out, it's, it can be heartbreaking, especially if you're in a relationship with her and you know, you're being basically served with a, uh, you know, kind of an ultimatum, which she, you know, or extortion, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, but that it'll be more to discuss. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching, yeah, for listening, sure. um, commenting. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Jason reads them. I don't. Uh, yeah. I, I will read them. And I will say this, if I can just give a quick shout out. <laughs> I mentioned uh, just doing national commercials over the years and stuff, and one of the comments was something like, cats and dogs have done national commercials. That's probably the best comment I've heard. Um, again, we're up here. We don't take ourselves too seriously. This is a very serious topic. Yeah. But uh, keep in mind, we're us being the public, we're so far removed from the intimate, nitty-gritty details yeah. that all we can do is formulate an opinion um, based on what's presented to us, what's available to us, and um, we'll do just that. And again, hopefully that will be that will include your unique experience which you've uh hinted hinted at yeah it's hard though because people yeah. be like oh you want your 15 like i saw somebody some yeah. comment that hurt my you 15 minutes i'm like bro yeah. i don't care like i literally made a tiktok it got views of people you need to tell your story right. and it, we're we this is episode 13 14 right. or whatever and we started this off like you said as as a a crime we show. wanted to help people yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> and it wasn't working yeah. um so then we were trying to figure out what to do look we're 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 there's a pandemic People right. are sitting at home not knowing what to do. We decided to pick up a hobby because we both like, you know, talking about certain right. things. And we thought, like, maybe it would be fun. At least we're doing something proactive, you meanies. <laughs> on that note, um, if you guys enjoyed, please subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, give us that follow. Um, and then we're going to come up with a name, I guess, for the show. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we should let uh, our viewers. Yeah, let us know. Let us know in the comments what the, <laughs> the name of the show should be called. That'll, That'll be, be good. good. Yeah. Let us know in the comments what the name should be called. Oh, That'll boy. be productive. Don't read those to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I already know. Yeah. I already know. Um, all right, guys, stay safe. Um, stay sane and be kind. <laughs> be kind. Yeah. <laughs>